Good afternoon, students. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Okay, right. So yesterday we were talking about the uh, pedigree analysis most of the times, and then before that we discussed briefly about the cytogenetic methods. Correct. <clears throat> so today we are going to switch to another type of method, and especially twin study method. So how is twin study method is used in studying various characteristics of humans, and what aspect of it? Because in the cell genetic method we learned that. chromosomal abnormalities uh, so such problems can be identified in humans whereas uh, pedigree analysis is mostly important for mutation based problems okay either any traits or characteristics or genetic problems more commonly where we use pedigree analysis okay 
So today we'll talk about twin study, foster child method and co-twin method and adoption studies. We are going to focus on this area of uh, studies that are conducted related to humans. Okay, right. So first of all, let's begin uh, understanding few terms related to twins and the different categories of twins that we may come across in this particular study here that we are going to talk about. So I'm sharing the screen with you, uh, the PowerPoint presentation related to that. And I have also shared a handout, like not a handout, additional reading material from a textbook chapter for you to read. I don't know if you got a chance to read that, uh, that I shared with you yesterday. So that also nicely describes some of the techniques that we're talking about, the karyotyping method, as well as the twin studies method. Okay, and with few case studies are given in that. So you can take few examples of things in that. And plus, I think even genetic counseling screening part is also briefly discussed. So if you need any additional information, that book chapter is nicely written to you know, cover those aspects. Okay, right. Let's begin the discussion on the twin studies. And just with a joke, I uh, found a cartoon on this. So as you notice here, I told my parents that if grades were so important, they should have paid for a smarter egg donor. Definitely this cartoon is not from the twin studies part because twin studies is kind of traditional method of learning. Although these days we do find it. So this is uh, this cartoon comes from the era of IVF technology, in vitro fertilization technology. So the girl is complaining that um, her parents are not happy with her grades because probably she's IVF baby. They would have gone for uh, a smarter mother, eggs from a smarter mother, she would have been smarter. Basically the idea here is she's talking about the genetic component here, importance of genetic component. And uh, so probably, uh, so parents who are not so intelligent cannot expect their children to have those characteristics, right? Because they're heritable. Or we don't know whether they're heritable or environmental factor influences it. We'll see it today. We'll briefly talk about what aspect uh, would that actually cover our characteristics. Is it uh, mostly the genetics or the environment? Right. Before getting into the details, I'm sure you probably are aware about identical twins and non-identical twins or fraternal twins they are known as. So what is the difference? Do you know what is the difference between identical and non-identical twins? Twins, those look identical to each other and twins that those don't. What is the difference? So what make them look same? In case of identical twins, what make them look same? It is the same DNA that they share. They both, both identical twins carry same DNA. Whereas in this image, did you figure out what is the difference? One child has hair, another child don't. That's a major difference. Of course, they made sure that uh, many of the features are also different. The idea here to show that they look different. They're not as identical as this. They do share some features like any brothers and sisters who are born to the same parents, but not as identical as the identical twins. So identical twins are the result of a process where egg and sperm fertilizes. So basically fusion happens, sperm fertilizes an egg, resulting in a zygote. Correct? Zygote is a combination of egg cell and the sperm cell. But what if that egg, when it is becoming embryo and uh, when it is multiplying, splits into two embryos? And each of them give rise to a child age. So the process is same fertilization, single fertilization event, where one egg fertilized by sperm. But the thing is, during the process of development, this zygote, which is becoming embryo, splits into two. So this must happen in the multi-cell stage. Let's say four cells, eight cell stage, for example. It may split into two, resulting in 
each of them resulting in a baby. Like that, both the children in identical twins case are the result of single zygote. Hence, identical twins are also called as monozygotic twins. They are also known as monozygotic twins. Okay, this is term I want you to remember. Monozygotic twins or MZ twins. In the textbooks, in the examples, we learn that they are also known as MZ twins, monozygotic twins. So when they say monozygotic twins, they are referring to identical twins. Okay. And why, are, why do they look identical? Because their genetic instructions are same. They both carry same genetic instructions. That is how they look identical to each other. So their software is same. It's like you bought different screens, Dell and HP screen. But you put the same operating system. Do they look the same or not? So it's like their software is same here. Okay. So monozygotic twins have same DNA. Hence they are identical to each other. So they are born out of the same zygote. And we don't know the factors. What actually makes them split into two? The factors are not well known, not well studied. Okay. It is not easy to tease apart as well. But whereas uh, you see that in IVF babies, in vitro fertilization when being used, it is there's higher percentage of children who are born out of IVF technology or, or tend to be you know, monozygotic twins because they tend to, the twinning component increases in IVF technology, maybe because they, they try to handle the embryo that might result in splitting of the embryo. But otherwise, it's a rare event. Twinning is a rare event. Okay, right. So how is uh, zygotic, monozygotic twins different from what is called fraternal twins? Fraternal or non-identical twins. Identical, non-identical are also called fraternal. So here fraternal twins are where two fertilization events take place. In identical, one fertilization event took place, takes place and fraternal twins are non-identical twins. Two such events take place. Meaning, there are two eggs. I don't know whether you read about biological components related to that. So normally, uh, in a women's life cycle, especially in the, during the menstruation cycle, only one egg gets released every month. Only one egg. We'll talk about this in Unit 12, Fertility and Fecundity. There we learn about it. So only one egg normally gets released per cycle. But rarely, two eggs may be released. And if there are two eggs, and usually there are... Millions of sperms that are released during the fertilization process. So an individual, one sperm fertilizes one egg, another sperm fertilizes another egg. So basically we have two fertilization events. Okay, resulting in individual, two separate babies. So it is very much like how babies are born in different pregnancies. It is almost like that. But happened, fertilization simultaneously happened in one event. So resulting in two babies. So these babies are as different as any brothers or fraternal, any brothers or any sisters. That is a fraternity, fraternal twins they are called. Usually remember, so these are monozygotic or zygotes or dizygotic twins. Non-identical twins are formed out of same zygote or another zygote or two zygotes. What do you notice here? Different zygotes. Two dizygotic twins. Yes. Is this concept clear to you? Okay, monozygotic because they're they are born out of one zygotes which split and dizygotic two fertilization events. Okay, and two babies born out of. So, although they are grown in the same womb, what do you notice here? Their DNA is defining it. But are they not born to the same parents? Why do they still have differences? Or any brothers and sisters, why do they still have differences? Although they are born to the same parents, should have received the same DNA. But why do you show differences? Recombination. Exactly. Very good, sir. So recombination process. Because the product, the combination of genes they would receive is always a tend to be different. The percentage of difference may vary. That is why some brothers and sisters are very similar. Some tend to be different. It all depends on the recombination event. What product that did recombination brought in? 
So see this, eggs and sperms produce almost in the same batch tend to be different. Otherwise, same parent's egg, same parent's sperm resulted in two different children. See how much diversity we normally have within the birth itself. Okay, but only the case where the zygote gets split for some reason, it results in monozygotic twins like that. Okay, right. Is the concept clear? MZ twins, DZ twins. And I'll talk to you further on for these studies, which is well known as twin studies. We actually focus on utilizing these twins as a way to understand a few human characteristics. Okay. Right. Sir, is there also a condition where, I mean, identical plus fraternal also happens? Yes, very good question. Yes, it is possible because we may have this two situations combined together. Two fertilization events have taken place. Two zygotes have formed. Okay, one zygote got split, resulting in identical twins. Another zygote didn't split, but gave rise to a baby who look who looks like who looks different from these two identical twins. So it is possible. Rarely, when people get quadruplets, triplets, these events, maybe just the splitting is multi into multiple babies can happen, or combinations of dizygotic, monozygotic twins happen at the same time. So resulting in triplets and quadruplets is possible. Very, very rare, but it is possible. Okay. Right. So let's now learn about what type of question are we trying to answer with twin studies? Okay. So first let's learn about uh, Sir Francis Galton. He's a cousin of Charles Darwin. Sir Francis Galton. Okay. So here we are uh, trying to learn whether nature or nurture influences our characteristics. Nature refers to genetics. Nurture refers to environment. So in a way a bit confusing. You may think nature has environment, but nature refers to here genetics. And nurture refers to environment. So Francis Galton, who was from 19th century, and also lived up to the beginning of the 20th century. So Francis Galton was someone who believed in the concept of nature. He said, you know, the qualities or characteristics run in blood, run in the genes. They are hereditary. He strongly believed that our genes are very, very, very important. He, and he connected those characteristics to success and eminence. He said success and eminence runs in families. People who are successful, their family members tend to be successful, he thought. So he thought hereditary characteristics, fixed characteristics. Okay, and the success and the eminence is defined by what genes do we receive and whose family we are born into. That is where he advocated the concept of eugenics. We'll talk about eugenics in unit 12, where we'll discuss the idea uh, a bit in detail. But for now, just remember eugenics is a feeling or it's a belief where we think that there are pure breed families or families where they are successful. They probably are the result of God's grace. Okay, whereas others are less pure or more impure, less are they inferior compared to this family. So they believed in the blood, they believed in the hereditary aspects. So that is a field called eugenics. We'll discuss that later for now. Just Charles Francis Galton is someone who actually promoted the concept of eugenics. Okay, next he preached the natural superiority of white men. He thought white men are superior over the blacks. White men are superior over blacks. And he said that natural superiority in whites come from their genes. Okay, and this is where the debate on nature versus nurture had begun. He said, is it because of our genes or is it because of our environment? And what is playing the major role in defining a character? Okay. 
So, no, briefly that, yes, definitely. We'll talk about that later. Is nature or nurture plays a major role? But definitely the concept had begun in the 19th century. A debate had begun on this. And uh, the major contribution comes from Sir Francis Galt on this. But of course, there are other teams of members who believed against the concept of nature's role. Like Alfred Bennett. Alfred Bennett is known for his debate on nurture. Because as I was telling you, Francis Galton is a supporter of nature. He even wrote the books called uh, Hereditary Genius in 1869. He wrote Hereditary Genius, supporting his concept of nature, our role of genes in defining characteristics. And he was even went further saying that they would define your success and superiority. Whereas on the other side, Alfred Binet, he believed in the concept of nurture playing a bigger role or an important role. He even designed first mental intelligence test, a test to measure intelligence, an IQ of children in 20th century, beginning of 20th century. And these tests were designed for students studying in France. And he said the mental age, okay, the mental age indicates that individual displays a mental ability that is typical to the children's age. A child at five years of age, child at 10 years of age, 15 years of age, a certain amount of intelligence. He could see a correlation between aging process as well as the increase in intelligence. And he saw correlation between intelligence and the development. So intelligence increases with the development process. Intelligence increases with the development process. Okay, one minute. So he thought there is a bigger role of nurture, environment, our exposure may play in our development. It is especially in defining the intelligence. So what do you think? Which of their thought is right? Any opinion? Sunil, Vishal, Shweta. It is a mostly mix. It is mixed. Okay. You think both of them play a role. All right. What about you, Vishal? Or if I ask another question, which one plays a more important role? Nurture or nature? In it, 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 I think it is nurture, sir. I think it's nurture. Okay. Vishal more towards. But of course, nature has to be there, right? Yes, sir, even I will go with nurture. Uh, I mean... I, I didn't say 50 50, I just said both play a role. Sure, sure. Okay, good. What about you both, Shweta and Yash? I do think nurture will play more role. Very good. Okay. Same thing with you, Yash. Okay. All right. So, nature, people who actually support the concept of nature, or what is the concept of nature? The debate, if you see a few points on the debate, if you see, so people who support the concept of nature believe that our genetics determine our behavior. So how we behave is defined by our genes and our personality traits are various characteristics and abilities are in our genes, they are in our nature. Okay, whereas people who support the concept of nurture believe that our environment, meaning our upbringing, our experiences in life, they determine our behavior. 
okay and we are nurtured to behave in certain way is what people from nurture concept be believe okay so nature nature people who support nature believe that the characteristics that we have is because of our dna or our genes whereas people who support the concept of nurture believe that our upbringing our experiences determine who we are so we are nurtured to become so and so correct so write few ideas on the debate of nature and nurture in case if you get a question on this on nature and nurture debate okay you should be able to write and explain what it is and how people think differently uh, in support of nature and nurture concept okay so and also there is some support to each of this some studies definitely show that we inherit some genes and some some of these genes code for our characteristics or components of our characteristics whereas those people who believe in the concept of nurture in support of them we see that identical twins although they are born with same dna as we just talked about they are born with same dna but if they are actually brought up in different environments they tend to have different behavior so these people say we'll take the twins let them survive or let them grow in different families different environments and you will clearly see the influence of environment on them does it make sense is there a good argument you think at least in the movies at least in the movies uh, but indeed the twin studies concept that we do we we actually uh, base this concept on uh, having children being exposed to different environments because as i was telling you we have limited options with humans but if when twins are born with uh, same dna it actually solves one problem because now we found combination of people where dna is fixed dna is same now we can use them as subjects to study something else we we can study a particular character if you change their environment take them and grow them in different environments and see if they indeed show the difference in their behavior so they become a great tool to us identical twins especially along with the dizygotic twins becomes a great tool for us to study and answer the debate of nature and nurture whether we'll come to a good conclusion or not a different thing but definitely twin studies are the great tool for that okay right and uh, also i want you to briefly think about this role of epigenetics did we talk about epigenetics before have you heard about epigenetics epigenetics we talked about as a means of as a mechanism in in one of the theories we talked in last unit gene imprinting or genetic imprinting so epigenetics ep means on addition to in addition to or on top of genetics on top of our dna so normally some changes do happen in our body and epigenetic changes refer to remember we were talking about adding methyl group methylation of dna sequences methylation of dna sequences can silence genes we talked about this concept right so epigenetics methylation is one example of epigenetics making such changes to dna to alter expression of of certain genes is what is called epigenetics that is what they are talking about here so if that we are not defined by our genes sometimes it is not just the genes our lifestyle choices can actually impact our genetic code sudden methylation sudden chemical changes to dna can also happen so we are the result of not just the genes but also the changes that happen epigenetic changes because of environmental exposure okay so these changes that happen which can change and decide whether a particular gene is expressing or not okay thereby resulting variation in the expression some may express more some may express less so some variation can be created even because of environmental role so although we are born with certain genes but the uh, the amount of epigenetic changes that we are realizing these days could be because of the environmental factors so we we cannot modify the genes 
but we can modify the epigenetic changes on them thereby defining the outcome of those genes thereby defining the outcome of those genes okay so are you able to follow this what is the role of epigenetics what is epigenetics first of all epigenetics is the external changes that happen to dna example methylation addition of methyl group would result in you know variation in whether those genes express or not express would they do they express more or less so that change can be brought in using the epigenetic changes like methylation that the interaction between nature and nurture is a way more complicated than we ever imagined so now it is getting more complex we said okay dna is playing a role or not or environment playing a role but now we are asking this question it is not just the dna and nurture also changes happening to the dna on top of the gene genetic structure so this is also further complicating this process and genes and environment are always working together so it is very difficult to tease them apart yes we can identify the significance whether this is more significant or like nature is more significant or nurture is more significant we can figure that out to a certain extent but they both act together genes and environment are always working together okay right so now let's get into how the studies are done this is a background i want you to understand what are monozygotic dizygotic twins and i want you to understand nature versus nurture differences okay is that clear now let's see how twin studies and other related studies are used to figure out the importance of genes or importance of the environment for a given character okay right for that we'll first begin with twin study method we'll first start with twin twin study method various family studies will basically do here so studies where you have multiple choices we may choose monozygotic twins dizygotic twins twins uh, grown together or reared apart meaning twins grown separately several different family studies can be done okay and the most important one is the core study here is twin study method so here with twin study method we would like to test monozygotic twins a particular character you choose and you see if this character is more influenced by monozygotic twins or in more more influenced in monozygotic twins or in dizygotic twins how does that show the difference to us i'm going to explain that to you but for now just we'll begin understanding that twin studies are the key tools in understanding or in addressing the problem of nature and nurture debate Okay, then I'll come to adoption studies faster methods later. For now, let's look into the twin study method. So, how are they used? So, of course, they are used in uh, dissecting the nature versus nurture argument, and here we use both identical twins, that is, monozygotic twins and dizygotic twins. We use identical twins and non-identical twins, monozygote and dizygotic twins. We use same study. We use both of them. I'll explain you that with example. And here we need to understand two terms: concordance and discordance. I'll explain you that in a minute. Concordance value and discordance value. We need to explain. understand. Okay, but uh, let's wait. Uh, let me show a few studies here, few scenarios here. how can we actually have uh, how can studies be so what do they reveal different then i will come back to concordance and discordance part so here in these studies we use both monozygotic and dizygotic twins in comparison with each other okay so identical twins so if you see in the image identical twins as i was telling you look identical because of their same genetic makeup they share same genes let's say if identical twins show some differences what does that mean let's say there is a character in the intelligence let's pick up intelligence both identical twins are intelligent or let's say identical twins who have grown in the same family but one is intelligent another one is less intelligent what does that mean is it their genes playing the role or is it their environment playing the role genes 
if two identical twins show difference in their intelligence? Or an expression of genes in one. So if genes are playing the role, then they both should have same intelligence. Correct? So as they are now, they have same DNA, then whatever differences we are seeing must be because of environment, not because of DNA. So that is how we actually base this, this, this uh, study. So identical twins share the same genetic makeup. We assume that differences between them are because of environmental factors, not because of DNA. Okay. So this is one assumption we make. So this is the same thing, same DNA, same environment. If intelligence is different, as I was telling you, we can assume that the differences in them is because of the differences in the environment. What type of environmental differences can define it? Can you tell me, uh, if, I, if we tell environment, is it where they live? So what, what do we mean by environment? What is environment made up of? So many things. It's not just the place they live. Everything, everything that influences outside the body. Like it could be friends. Let's say the two twins went to the same school. But they have different friends. Do you think they'll be influenced differently or not? They live in the same home. They actually have same DNA. But they may have different friends. They may read different books. They may watch different movies. And the influence they gain from the different environment will be different. They may be designed to be different. Their behavior will be different. So that is what is environment. Environment is something, you know, outside what our DNA can cover. Everything, even sometimes inside the mother's womb also, the womb is also environment. Okay? So intelligence may be because, if intelligence is different between monozygotic twins, it could be because of the differences in their friends, books they read, movies they watch, so all sorts of things. Most likely, uh, identical twins are sent to same school, right? So school environment may not be different, but the specifics are maybe different. Sir, last to last Sunday, there was a, uh, an article on this. Hmm, is it? In, in uh, what? In Hindu, it was Sunday Science. It said that there are differences, some 15% in identical twins in genes itself. So, <laughs> Good. Yes. So that new study has come, I think. No, no, yes. I think that, that is kind of known. I don't know exactly what they were talking in that article. But uh, we are born, uh, twins are born with same DNA, but mutations do happen, right? changes to happen in them, eventually they acquire more chains. I have to check in that study whether they are talking about the differences at birth or differences that they acquire over a period of time. What differences did they, did you read that article? Dead, but I forgot that. Okay. Uh, but I, I, I read it that it was uh, identical twins. Yeah, they are identical twins when they, were, when they are born, but even identical twins, they acquire different mutations, right? Mutations is a common theme that does happen. Our DNA does slightly change over a period of time. But uh, yeah, one, if they're one near the radioactive plant might have different things. So, so I don't know whether they're talking about those differences or if possible, can you okay, let me find that article if last Sunday, right? Sir, actually I can tell you the date itself. Yeah, or you can share the link or title of that. Sir, it was in the uh, science and tech part. So, right, last Sunday, right? I, I, will, I will check that. I got that. Okay. Good. I'll share in the group. Yeah, you can share there. Okay. But uh, twins also tend to grow up in the same environment, right? You, you, have you seen how children are treated, how twins are treated? So compared to the other children, twins are treated, they actually want, parents want them to dress up in the same manner. They want them to be dressed up in the same manner, go to same school, eat or wear same clothes. Okay. So there are many things that may end up having same. So usually there are slightly lesser differences you find between in terms of environment in twins compared to the way we deal with the non-zygotic twins or non-identical. 
okay so if they happen to have the same intelligence can we confidently say that it is because of their genes so this is one problem with the twin studies i was telling you so far we assume that so whatever differences are there it is because of their environment but if it is same the character is same can we say it is absolutely because of their dna no we won't be able to say because even their environment is same so this is one complexity or limitation of twin studies is where we can say we can see their higher role of dna but we also have a same environmental component there so it becomes hard to tell if it is purely because of genetics or also because of environment correct for that studies have to be designed differently so what do we do for that okay let's say they have same dna but let let's grow them in different environments or you may pick different people different dna grow them in same environment so you design experiments like this either you rear them separately or you rear them together so monozygotic twins reared separately or dizygotic twins are even if not necessarily dizygotic twins but different children grown in the same environment you can do studies like that you can design studies like that but it's very difficult to design studies like that so most of the times what happens is collect data of those who lived in a different environments versus those who lived in the same environment that is we will talk about foster child method adoption child methods we will talk about those components okay right so let's see same dna different environment twins adopted by different families take monozygotic twins let them be adopted by different families so let's say that they are poor they could not have both the babies at the same time they could not afford to have them they may have uh, you know uh they may have sent a child to another family member maybe a relative or maybe they are adopted by some other family so this provides us a unique opportunity to study those twins and their characteristics so twins adopted by different families grow up in different environments if intelligence is the same thing it is likely due to genetics because they have taken apart in the previous case i told you if intelligence is same we don't know whether it is because of their dna or because of their environment because they also lived in the same environment but what if you rear them apart grow them apart then what happens if still they have same intelligence what does that mean it is mostly because of nature correct can we tell us with more confidence than the previous case if they are grown in different families in different environments then we can say although they are grown in different families but they still show same intelligence it could be because of same dna if their intelligence is different then we say it is probably because of their environment because the environment changed dna is same more or less same 15% difference is not huge right 85% same and we talking about same identical in a normal individuals we say similar 99.9% similar they are not identical their identity will be very different okay the next scenario is let's say one sibling is adopted so you have a children one child is adopted in a family and if intelligence is the same so both children who is the biological child of the family and one child is adopted and both are showing same intelligence of course with one pair you cannot confidently say you observe this in 50 families families where one is adopted child one is biological child if they all show in the same environment say no difference in intelligence then definitely intelligence is playing the big role and why say was if they are showing a difference in their intelligence so environment is same but what is different in them in two different children is a genes so because of the changes in their genes they are showing different intelligence like that these are the different scenarios do you understand the importance of having these different scenarios here twins in the same place versus twins in the different places and dizygotic twins are unrelated people living in the same environment all these all these scenarios will provide us a good understanding about the role of genetics versus environment okay so this is how normally the designing works experimental design works like this
Now let's go to the analytical part. So this is how design experimental design works. Now what is concordance? What is discordance? And uh, are there any ways of calculating the correlation or differences between mono and trizygote difference? Let's understand that. Okay. So this is kind of uh, the template we need to understand how this is calculated. So what is concordance rate? Concordance is what we prefer to calculate. It's a simple way of knowing the or collecting the data on in these studies. The study of heritability, we'll talk about heritability also. There is one more calculation that we have. So, but for now, in twins, we assume that monozygotic twins share all of their DNA. Dizygotic twins share only 50% of their DNA. 50% of their DNA. Normally, uh, on average, we think with this number varies. Dizygotic twins also, it may go up to 75%. But we assume that they probably only share 50% of their DNA, whereas identical twins share almost 100% of their DNA. But real number is slightly different, as we said. Our assumption is not absolutely right here because we tend to acquire changes uh, through, through our lifetime. But in theory, what do we think? Monozygotic twins are 100% same in terms of their DNA. Dizygotic twins are 50%. Then we calculate what is called the concordance rate or concordance value for it. So what is concordance? It's a very simple thing. Agreement between traits exhibited by both twins. If twins show same character, same difference in them. Like for example, the, if you take the example of intelligence, both of them show same IQ value. Let's say IQ, some number to the random number to the IQ, let's say they found out. For twins, two twins, A1, A2. If they both show same intelligence, they are concordant to that character. They are concordant to that character. If they show same intelligence, they are, they are in agreement with each other. Concordance refers to being in agreement with each other. Like that, in a study, you calculate how many children are in agreement, how many monozygotic twins are in agreement, how many dizygotic twins are in agreement. Twins show concordance if both have the same trait and opposite to that is discordance. Opposite to concordance is discordance. Meaning one shows the trait, the other one don't. Meaning one is intelligent, the other one is not intelligent or not as intelligent as A1. A1 is highly intelligent, A2 is not. Then do you call them concordant or discordant? If A1 is more intelligent than A2. Discordant. Discordant because they both are showing difference in their feature. Okay, in a more obvious example, if I have to give you, let's say, in a family, one person developed, let's say, person one person developed a genetic crop. Okay, but genetic problem will be more biased. So any character, let's say alcoholism, for example. In a couple, one, one person, in a, in a pair, in twin pair, one person tend to smoke, another person don't. So one have a smoking, uh, you know, ability or not ability, of course, a tendency to smoke, another one didn't. So they are discardant twins. They don't have the same character, same trait, same interest. Okay, so it is obvious they both are not in agreement with each other. Like that for both monozygotic twins, dizygotic twins, you calculate the concordance and discordance rate. Okay, and there are multiple possibilities. Let's say if in twin studies, the degree of concordance for a rate is compared to, so what do you do? You compare this monodigotic twins concordance rate to dizygotic twins concordance rate. So the best case scenario, if trait is completely controlled by genes, your nature is responsible for that trait. What should be the concordance rate for monozygotic twins? If a trait is completely controlled by nature, no role of environment, what should be the best concordance rate for monozygotic twins? One. One hundred percent. If you observe 10 of the pairs, all 10 of them should show concordance with each other with no difference. 
What about the dizygotic twins? Same thing in the dizygotic twins. Fifty percent. Fifty maximum is fifty. Maximum is point five. Point five concordance rate. Fifty percent or point five. Okay. Sir, we are uh, talking about nature. We are talking about nature. Genetics. Right. Nur nurture is environment. Nature is genes. So if they have hundred percent concordance rate, it is one value one for the monozygotic twins and value point five for the dizygotic twins. Meaning, they all are showing high value for the maximum value for the genetics one. Okay. So this is one way of calculating that. In some studies, I think examples that we have seen in the, uh, if at all you have seen in the PDF that I shared with you, either you can go with concordance values for monozygotic, dizygotic, or sometimes they calculate what is called heritability. Another value uh, for correlation they calculate is heritability. So concordance rate can be converted into heritability with few calculations with a formula. So what is heritability? Heritability means degree of genetic determination of a trait. So the role of genetic determination or role of genes in a given character is called heritability, heritable component. Okay. So how do they calculate this heritability or degree of genetic determination of a character? So H, heritability equal to concordance of monozygotic twins minus concordance between dizygotic twins divided by 100 minus CDZ. So basically, you are ma matching with the population, a percentage. The difference between concordance value for monozygotic and dizygotic divided by 100 minus CD. So let's take a theoretical assumption. In the previous case, in intelligence case, what would we talk about to understand the, you know, this formula? So CMZ, let's say concordance rate for monozygotic twins. We just talked about in one particular theoretical character is 100%. So one, if CMZ is one or 100%, if CMZ is 100% or one, and CDZ, concordance for dizygotic twins is 0.5 or 50%, what will be the H value? Yeah. You understand my question? Okay, write down the formula and uh, write down this example. For a concordance rate of 100 or 1, and uh, for monozygotic twins, and for dizygotic twins, if it is 0.5 or 50, what is the H value for it? One. one, H will be one. So one is the highest number of concordance or heritability. Okay, so higher the H value, higher the role of nature or genetic component. Lower the H value, lower the role of genetic component. So just to have that correlation figured out, they use the heritability value or H value. Sir, will we talk about how this formula came about? Is that required? In literature, they do talk about, especially some case studies when we when we read, they talk about H value. They use the word instead of using concordance, discordance rate, because in concordance, discordance, you always have to compare two values, right? In H, you see the correlation already. H means H value higher, high, co high concordance rate, high genetic code. If H value is low, 
let's say 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of H value, you know that environment genetics is not playing a big role. Maybe environment playing a big role. So single value to understand the relationship here. Otherwise, what do you say? 50, 60% of concordance into monozygote, 50% for dizygote. You cannot easily make out the meaning of it. That is why in, in textbooks, I've seen the use heritability for that. This is how it is. So you can mention in the exam, if they ask about twin studies, then you mention about how twin study is designed, what is the concordance and discordance value, and briefly write how is H value is calculated. Degree of genetic determination of trait you write and show this formula, that's it. It is not too difficult, right? You're just subtracting concordance value for dizygotic twins from monozygotic divided by 100 minus concordance for dizygotic. Okay, some studies show concordance value, some studies show heritability. Okay. Excuse me. Right. Next. We go with some examples of twin studies. Some examples of twin studies. So this uh, chapter I gave you for reading yesterday, they talk about a case study in this. It's up to you whether you want to take a study. So this is a particular case study here. So what they have done, this is a study done in US. Okay, and this is a study that examines twins to understand the role of genetics and environmental contribution to obesity. So in order to understand the role of genes or uh, environmental factors in obesity, because obesity is a major problem in developed countries, right? So they said, uh, let's actually figure out this by understanding whether genetics is playing a main role or environment is playing the main role. Okay, so here they, they collected 4,000 pairs of twins, 4,000 pairs. It rarely happens. Rarely we can recruit so many pairs because twinning is a very rare component. Finding twins who match the demand of the you know, study is also very difficult. But they could recruit 4,000 pairs of twins. And mainly this is part of the National Academy of Sciences, National Research Council. So some countries maintain twin registry. Some countries do maintain twin registries. They, they keep an order of it because it's a very valuable data. Some countries do that. So here, National Academy of Sciences, National Research Council, twin registry they have used. Okay, here, this registry is a database of almost 16,000 males, twin pairs, and who are born between 1917 and 1927, 10 years period. They are born in 1917 and 27 period, and they, they were part of US Army. So these people were recruited in US Army during World War II. During World War II. So what they have done, so people born in this 1917 to 90, so 27 periods, so approximately the same period. So during the recruitment, so as part of this study, they have collected their data on height and weight. They collected their data on their height and their weight during the recruitment into the military. So they collected data twice a year, first time during the recruitment process. Maybe they are about 20, 25 years of age at that time. And again, second time they collected their data in 1967. So approximately when these people are at the age of 40 years or 50 years. So twice they took the data. At this time of recruitment, approximately when they are about 20, 25 years. And then again after about 40 years. So 40 to 50 years. Again after 20 years. So at the time of 40 to 50 years. So now they compare the data. They said for these twins, okay, how does the data look like? How did they change in their weight over a period of time? And is there a correlation between monozygotic twins and dizygotic twins? 
So from this data, they computed concordance value for monozygotic twins and dizygotic twins. So look at their data. So this is a very good case study. I have also explained this in a YouTube video I have done uh, two years ago indeed. So here there are the concordance values for the body weight among monozygotic twins and dizygotic twins at the induction and also the second time at the follow-up. So at induction, what happened? So percent overweight that they calculated percent overweight. Okay, meaning difference between expected weight and actual weight. So how much overweight are they? So they are linking this with the overweight. If people with 15% overweight, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 overweight, so they are categorized them. So people with this much of overweight, this much amount of overweight, like that. In and comparison with that is the concordance value for monozygotic twins and dizygotic twins. Concordance value for monozygotic twins and dizygotic. So what do you see here? It is very difficult to get an outcome by looking at numbers like this. They're very confusing. And that's why I was telling you, H value will be a bit easier. Okay, so 15, we'll just pick up two examples, okay? So 61 is the concordance rate between monozygotic twins and 31 for the dizygotic. And the one that has maximum difference is persons with overweight of 40, almost 40 difference. So they are, they show 44 in monozygotic twins case and zero for dizygotic twins case. And follow-up is more or less similar, 36, six, not so much of difference, 68 and 49, okay? But what is their conclusion? What did they learn from this? I think it's very difficult for us to derive this. Let's see their conclusions. What are they talking about conclusions and if they, if they make sense to us? The researchers concluded that among the group being studied, body weight appeared to be strongly influenced by genetic factors. They could study, they could say here that the weight, gaining of weight or obesity is mainly caused by their genetic factors. Okay. They concluded, they actually even given the numbers, some statistical numbers for this to conclude that genetics accounted for 77% of the variation. 77% of the variation in their weight is because of their genetics at initial stage. And 84% when second time they studied them. So let's say 75 to 80% of genetics role, 25% of the environmental role approximately. Meaning genetics seems to be playing a big role in obesity. Obesity runs in families. Sometimes we see that, right? But this doesn't mean that only genetics define this. Environmental role. People who are actually have a very sedentary lifestyle, food habits are also is not advisable for maintaining the weight. In those people starting from, you know, a certain ages, you notice that they put on too much of weight. Otherwise, in families, we see obesity runs in families too, right? People who tend to be actually have obese, they, they tend to have children who are obese, who are born like that as well. So definitely there is a bigger genetic component for this. But few things I want you to observe. When you see the maximum number of concordance for monozygotic twins is 61, meaning it is not 100% concordance. Only 60% of the recruited monozygotic twins show concordance. Meaning there is still 40% variation. So definitely it is showing it is not 100% defined by genetics, but genetics have a bigger role to play and genetics together with environment defines obesity. This is what we can conclude from this study. Okay, is it, is it clear to you? Is the case study clear to you? So what they have done here, they collected enough data for monozygotic twins and dizygotic twins. Okay, and then from the data, they calculated concordance value for monozygotic twins at different weight differences and for dizygotic twins. And then based on the monozygotic and dizygotic concordance rate and along with some statistical analysis, they end up seeing that 77% of genetics playing the role in the initial stages 
The second data that they collected about 40 to 50 years of age, 84% of the genetics role. Overall, there is an agreement between the conclusion here that genetics is playing a major role and also environmental role is also there. That is what the conclusion. But no, I don't think in any case, usually you will find our utmostly rare where we find 100% of the genes role and no role of environment. That doesn't normally happen. It's an interplay between genes and environment. Okay. So you can write this as a case study. There are many possibilities for writing case studies. And I'll show you a couple of examples of what has been shown for twin studies in twin studies with respect to various characteristics. So here in this graph, they're showing, <coughs> excuse me. So we are seeing here concordance values for monozygotic and dizygotic for range of abilities of people, of humans. So look at these values, reading disability, people having difficulty in reading, people who suffer from depression, autism, Alzheimer's, schizophrenia, Alcoholism in males, alcoholism in females. The blue color line indicate concordance rate in monozygotic twins. Red color one indicate concordance rate in dizygotic twins. So what do you say from this? Can you pick up a character where there is a higher significant role of genes compared to the, compared to the environment? Anything stands out here in this example to you? Alcoholism. Alcoholism. Concordance is less, so probably environment. Right. Concordance is right, so environmental role is big, yeah. Right. But there's something else where there's a clear distinction between role of genes and no role of environment or a less significant role of environment. Autism. Autism. Look at autism. So point almost 0 0.7, 70 percent of concordance rate for monozygotic twins about 10% for uh, dizygotic twins, a clear genetic component in autism. Rarely it happens, rarely we see that because rest of the things, we do see a bigger, of course, a bigger role of genetics and also environmental role, 60, 55% and 70% for reading disability. Depression also has genetics role, an important genetics role. Autism is clearly standing out. Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's also bigger genetic component, but also we have a significant environmental component here. Okay, alcoholism in female seems to have a lesser, lesser difference. Environment is playing the biggest role or more significant role comparatively with other characteristics for alcoholism in females. Okay, so like that we may find, I don't think we can come to a conclusion that whether genes is playing the role or environment. So genes is an underlying component. Whatever is happening, even environment to act, we need to have genes. Otherwise, what do what do environment what does environment act on? So genes are the underlying components for this, but genes don't entirely define our characteristics. It is the combination of genes and environment, but some of them we definitely see environment playing a big role. Like that, there are so many studies which you don't have to remember all of them. So there are so many studies for this. It's also taken from the uh, the book that I have uh, shown you. So concordance rate values for many other diseases are also calculated. Heart attacks asthma, cancer, epilepsy, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis. But of course, there's no clear in, uh, conclusion on any of them. Asthma can be, as you see, asthma can be, has a genetic component, but also has a significant dizygotic component, meaning uh, environmental component, because it is not 100%, only 50% of, 50% uh, of concordance. Already 50% of concordance is because of the, are lost because of environmental differences. And dizygotic twins show about 25%. So definitely a bigger environmental role for asthma. Bigger environmental role for asthma can be seen. Heart attack also a similar story. We have both environment and genes are important. Maybe we run, we, we run into the risk of having heart attacks because of our genetics. 
but equally environment what do we eat whether we actually have a active lifestyle can define how many people do get heart attacks like that you do have differences in various components you see like that we keep getting enough idea on many of these diseases hormonal diseases we see here type 1 diabetes type 2 diabetes type 1 is more genetic autoimmune problem type 2 okay these are all several studies have been conducted but if you write one case study and briefly mention one of the ones i have shown you like a graph the first one it's up to you so this should be sufficient for us to tell so what does twin twin studies do okay this is what i already showed you yeah even for obesity so this is the table i have taken from for obesity that we already have the same conclusion 70% of the uh genetic component or heritability component obesity in children you see 0.77 to 0.8 heritability value it's easy now to compare as you compare with the concordance discordance we have seen in the book here you see it 0.8 almost 0.8% of 0.8 heritability 80% heritability in children maximum majority of the component is because of the genetics in adults slightly less 0.64 because now environment's kick in environment has a bigger role to play as we grow as we age okay so this is obesity number we talked about 0.77 right so this is do you see what twin studies can show us by comparison between monozygotic and zygotic twins okay this is a this is the idea about the twin studies yeah there is much more i don't think we need so much here sir does it also cover the uh, i mean children are obese because of the genes but uh, does it also say that parents were also but parents were due to environment right or maybe mutation you know so parents it happens because of environment it doesn't reach children right so what reaches children okay i think you are trying to say that if they they grow up in the same environment environment is playing a role is that is what you are saying or you are saying environmental impact on the children is inherited to them what are you trying to say ha huh. it the environment it acted on the parents and then parents passed it on uh, to yeah but that has to happen like uh, if they both are in the same environment if that is affecting them so having environmental effect on genes will be less although epigenetic changes do happen environmental impact cannot be easily seen on our genes in the same generation it will take time to do show or uh, include those differences or include those differences in it correct so environmental impact on dna may not be immediately felt in the next generation in the other way you can see that environment that they are living in both like they eat the same type of food parents as well as children so same environment may result in the effect that we are seeing but of course we are not comparing the uh, we will we'll talk about that in next studies family studies we'll talk about adoption and those studies that fostering child methods they will understand a bit more on this okay but here lesser more than a genetic component environment will will play common theme here if they are grown up in the same families in the same environment rather than assuming that the environment might have affected the genes that may not be inherited from parents to them but say sharing the same environment may have same effect that aspect can be taken here okay so what are the strengths of these twin studies what are the benefits of these twin studies twin studies have produced a great deal of data as we have seen enough examples i just mentioned to you you don't have to remember all of them but i have shown couple of them for you to remember one case study and one graph is sufficient for you otherwise great deal of data has been collected as part of twin studies to understand what is the role of biology what is the role of genetic component and this also has helped the psychologists to stress prevention for those who are vulnerable to such disorders and how do you deal with it if they go through the depression so what type of steps we can take to uh, to uh, manage that problem so twin studies would help us in dealing with such an information in dealing with such a situation of genetic problem or psychological problem any character for that matter alcoholism you know if environment is playing a major role the way you work on it will be different if it is a role of dna maybe you you don't have too much to do but if it is an environmental role you probably have something that you can figure out to change that behavior 
So there is a high cross-cultural reliability of concordance levels. Also, they have seen that in different populations when they studied these particular characteristics, same outcome is seen, similar outcome, if not same outcome, meaning there's a cross-cultural reliability is there on the concordance levels. So some of these twin studies data can be, can be used to represent other populations because there's a lot of correlation of what they show in one population and the other population with respect to a character. Okay, I'll also talk to you about significance of that, of why do we need to know? But before that, any limitations, any problems with twin, twin studies you felt? What did you feel about the twin studies? So what limitations do you do you think about in twin studies? Do you see any problems in twin studies? As per our discussion now? Sir, uh, we cannot clearly demarcate the rule sometimes, in some cases. We cannot clearly come to a conclusion. We only know the relative role of each other. Very good point. What else? We have a limited uh, data to work on. Exactly. That's also a very, very important point. Limited by the number of twins we have. It's a rare event. And second, can we control their environment? Can we control their behavior? Can we actually have them do the same thing consistently without sharing the same environment? It is very difficult to impose those rules on humans for sake of experiments. And we're talking about waiting for years of time. If it is for a few days, maybe you can force them to have follow certain rules and regulations. But if you are doing the study for years, we cannot have them you know, to follow the same rules and principles to satisfy the requirements of the study. So maintaining those requirements is difficult and challenging. MZ twins, okay? So number is a problem, conclusion that we won't be able to come. And most importantly, excuse me, it will not tell us what genes are playing a role. We only know genetic component is bigger maybe compared to the environmental component. Well, what genes are playing a role? Nature of the genes is also not known. Twin studies cannot reveal nature of the things. It's not molecular study. Right in the as the case with karyotyping fish, the methods we talked about there, definitely we notice that it pinpoints the problem. Here it doesn't pinpoint. We know overall the genetics is playing this role. Maybe environment is playing a, also playing an important role. That's how much we know. It superficially tells us. So the exact cause, exact reason behind the problem or the differences are not known. Correct. And also. Even though monozygotic twins are rarely separated at birth and raised in a totally different environment, it is really necessary to substantiate claims. So monozygotic twins are rarely separated at birth and raised. Let's say that rearing monozygotic twins in different environments, growing them in different environments. But even when you separated them, let's say at the age of five, you separated them. But they anyway already shared environment in the mother's womb. Okay. And uh, even, and they probably have raised for a few years before they moved to different environments. So what role did that play? We don't know. Because initial stages of life is very important. That is when we define our characteristics sometimes. So they shared environment in the mother's womb and also maybe a few years outside the mother's womb before they got separated. Can we, can, can we consider, can we actually understand the role that it played we cannot quantify that. We'll, we'll talk about co-twin studies next in order to complement the study. So we don't know. We cannot easily identify the role of that. We cannot easily identify the impact of the similarity they showed before they are being separated. So we don't have enough control on this. And sometimes it may be very sensitive to the age. If children for first five years have grown up in the same family, but later they have taken to different families. The impact they have in the first five years may be very big. And that, that is very difficult to compensate for. And monozygotic twins rare together share many of the same experiences. Compared to dizygotic twins, I was telling you, they are treated in the same manner. You don't treat two brothers and sisters or two brothers if they are non-identical in the same manner Then you do treat them if they are monozygotic twins. You agree with that? Monozygotic twins are treated more similarly than dizygotic twins. So the difference can also account for some of, some amount of the difference we see in the outcome. And dizygotic twins rare together may not share the same experiences due to levels of attractiveness or temperament. Let's say you 
two brothers living in the same family but as i was telling you they may have enough differences in their tastes they may not like the same food they may not like the same movies same friends same school same sports so we may assume that they are living in the same environment but their inherent genetic components may show them or guide them towards different interest so like that there is only so much that we can control in twin studies there are many of those things that we have no control on that that we have to accept and admit okay right so next we'll talk about co twin studies so in the syllabus we also have so far we talked about twin studies and they briefly mentioned about co twin method this method is not very well explained in any source so many times students who prepare for anthropology frequently ask this question to me sir can you please explain what is co twin method is there any particular source for it co twin method is not explained in any textbooks okay rarely we see this so from research i found out a brief summary that you will be able to follow okay so let me explain you what is co twin method how is it different from twin method what does it tell us and when is this co twin method used used okay right i think this builds on what we just talked about in limitations in limitations i was telling you although we assume that twins have same dna maybe different environment even after rearing them in different homes but they still share same environment in the mother's womb as i just told but how do you compensate for that how do you ensure that those differences are taken care of you have a control which will take care of those differences so for that we use what is called co twin method so what does it mean by co twin method what does it mean by co twin so co twin is a in a twin pair if there is a1 a2 a1 is a co twin of a2 a2 is a co twin of a1 in a pair each of them are co twins of each other so when we say co twins we are talking about co twins of a single pair but we are not interested in every co twins in a study like this we focus on disease discardant twins what do i mean by that we take twins who show discardants who don't show the same character they show discardants such twins are selected for co twin method and co twin method usually is an internal control i will show you in a case study you will understand it better it is used as an internal control so here what do we do in a twin pair let's say a 50 twin pairs you are studying 50 twin pairs you are studying out of 50 twin pairs let's say 10 of them did in show the concordance 10 of them were discarded you choose only those 10 people who are who are showing the discardance value okay so twin pairs who differ are selected in them one is showing discardance one is showing the one is showing the trait another one is not showing the trait so one is showing the disease another one is not showing the disease so healthy co twin can be used as a control for the diseased twin so we have two here one healthy another one diseased so we use those combinations to see because they must have some differences during their environment which resulted in the difference okay i'll explain you with an example there are two scenarios that we can think about here one disease discardant to twin and comparison between them right a scenario where you actually want to know there is a pair of there are pair of people where you chose co twins in them and they reveal information that other other combinations cannot reveal what do i mean by this okay i think i have to explain this with example for you to follow otherwise it is very difficult uh, but for now just understand the importance of co twin method and then case study and i'll repeat the statement i just gave twins share the same intra uterine environment and typically are reared together so twins have both same dna also same environment so when we use co twin methods they can become a very effective tool to minimize this confounding effect because of the unmeasured or the differences that we cannot measure in childhood or adolescent environment so the differences that may have may even show the problems so small differences in them may show the problems which is visible in coat twins but not in the concordant twins so why are some twins are discordant with each other there must be some difference to it 
So the difference can be felt in the disease discardant twins, but not the real twins. What do I mean by that? Let's see a case study for this. And then I'll explain you this. Okay, I will, uh, I've taken this from a research paper. I've also mentioned this paper, this from 2003. So it's a case study for Cotwin method. Okay, first I'll explain how Cotwin methods are the best suited for this study, but not regular twins or concordant twins or any other pair of people. Okay, let's see what is the study. Focus on this. This is uh, an idea that I'm going to tell you here. So this is from a research paper in 2003. The study said, a twin study of the neuropsychological consequences of stimulant abuse. What is the study about? So there are people who actually started taking drugs. They are on drugs. There are people. This twin study focuses on study on those people who takes drugs. But they stop taking the drugs. And after a year, they are studying these people for any neuropsychological problems. They are checking if these people have any neuropsychological problems after one year of leaving the consumption of drug is what they are seeing. Did you understand the question here? Make a note of that. It's very important. Okay, otherwise it may confuse you a bit. Uh, do we need to make a note of the study name? Or? Uh, summary of the study. I'm going to share this uh, Okay, this uh, slide with you. So it's up to you. If you can follow what I have written here, great. If you want to simplify when I'm explaining it, because study is a bit complex. You want to you want to make notes on understanding this part. Okay, just write down the summary as I'm explaining. Study title, you don't have to, but idea here is they're working on whom? They're working on about 50 pairs of people who are on drugs, who are on drugs who are on drugs and the idea is to see post to leaving this habit post to leaving this habit if they see any neuropsychological consequences issues with their neuros nervous system and psychological problems do they see any such problems like any start of stress factors Okay, right. so the objective of this study is to examine whether residual or leftover neuropsychological effects of stimulant abuse, taking the drugs as stimulants, persist beyond a year of abstinence. So even after a year of leaving that habit, does it still continue to have effects on those people even after a year? So this is what you want to study. Tell me if you want to study something like that, what type of subjects do you take? Think about it. This is like a designing an experiment in anthropology. So you are, did you understand the objective here? So few people are on drugs. You want to see even if after them going out of taking drugs, even after one year, do they experience problems because of that on their nervous system and psychological system? How do you study this? Think about it. Just, uh, it, it's okay. You can be, just think with logic here. I can help you. I just want you to understand the motto and like a motto in, in behind designing this method. Compare with people, compare with uh, before they took drug or maybe somebody uh, who is not taking drugs at all. Correct. So comparing it with people uh, before they have taken the drug, after they have taken the drug. There you are talking about the impact of drug. Correct? But that may not be possible because you don't ask them to take the drug in the study. You have to find people who are, who are on drugs. Correct? Okay. The second suggestion you gave is right. Second suggestion you said, maybe we can compare it with people who are not on drugs. Correct? Okay. Exactly. That is what they have done. Abusers versus non-abusers. They have taken abusers who are on the drugs and taken non-abusers who are not on the drugs. They compared the effects on both of them. So we need a positive, we need a reference point, right? 
otherwise everyone probably have depression but compared to non abusers do they are they experiencing more depression than others is what you need to answer but if you are actually imagine if you take an unrelated people let's say you take a person a person b one is an abuser another one is a non abuser how do you know the impact is only because of the drug abuse let's say that you found a person a is abuser b is non abuser and a shows more depression than the b for example how do you know that is because of the drugs can it be because of the differences they have in their genes or environment mainly here genes how do you know that right the study gets complex you cannot simply prove because you compared non abusers with the abusers because inherently there are problems in them so for such studies taking twins do you think is a good idea if you take a twin pair one on the drug abuse another one don't have the drug abuse like is not on the drugs so twin pair who is who actually had a habit of taking drugs and another one no such habit he had so can discardant with respect to that behavior so when you do study like that is called co twin method so you are studying co twins here so studying whom co twins you are studying here okay so see what did they find out 50 twin pairs in which only one member had heavy stimulant abuse either cocaine or other products like amphetamines okay are studied here no difference found between abusers and non abusers on their lifetime access conditions so there are several conditions that they have seen here like depression few things that you may be understand here like depression anxiety getting panic post traumatic stress disorder okay gambling getting into gambling or depending on alcohol tobacco cannabis opioids so the all this behavior has been checked in abusers and non abusers and they are co twins that is why the number is very small only 50 pairs they could see you don't get enough numbers otherwise imagine for the co twins twins are rare out of them you want to find more of them with the discordance features very difficult the study demonstrated that deficits in attention and motor skills persist after one year of abstinence from stimulant use okay rather than uh, understanding all these components we'll take up the one one outcome here the main outcome here they say that so people who are drug abusers they have a problem in focusing problem in showing attention and problem in motor skills meaning holding something holding on to something had become a problem even after one year because of drug abuse so this effect had continued even after one year when compared to the co twin meaning it is not because of their genetic problem not because of inherent issue of you know controlling their motor skills but because of the drug abuse we know that because we have a dna being same now environmental factor is different here environmental factor is there are drug abuse so environmental factor is different but genes are same so we can with more confidence we can say that the problem you are noticing in the co twin here is because of the stimulant abuse or drug abuse. do you see the importance of taking co twins here than any randomly uh, unrelated people sunil you seem to be confused <laughs> sir i am just thinking if one of them is taking why is not the other one taking <laughs> multiple reasons it could be because of several factors as i was talking about environmental difference uh, influenced by people influenced by their school books lots of factors friends most importantly friends right their yeah. friends we see in the movies let's say a twin pair one got into movie industry another one is not is there a higher chance of getting into drugs because of their environment because of human huge influence we usually see the drug rockets being busted in the movie industries of course nothing hap happens afterwards right this is a common theme right maybe because of the environment at the best job they do profession they chose could be that and study with unrelated non abusers might have not provided data like this and not have taken us to the conclusion like this so this is the importance of 
co-twin studies. Could you follow the example here? Could you follow the case study here? Okay. We don't have any case studies normally in the literature that I have seen when the standard anthropology textbooks, but I found this and rarely they talk about co-twin method. I don't know why it has been specified in the UPSC syllabus, but I looked around, I found few studies in twin studies and co-twin studies methods. And this is the example I found. Okay. Like that, remember case studies where possible, show where such a method is being useful, being used. Okay. So this is about co-twin method. Sir, during the lifetime access, as in through, throughout the life, they didn't have any issues. No, no, no. This is something to do with the specific measures. On, on at a particular age of their life, they identify certain features and their uh, sensitivity to those features, like depression or ability or, sorry, interest towards taking, consuming alcohol, like that. Okay. Okay. Next, briefly, we'll talk about two of these studies, adoptions and fostering methods. These are also family studies, but the core idea is done. I'm going to briefly tell you the other studies that are part of it, one of them being mentioned in the syllabus. So fostering method, we will talk about, we synonymously use these words sometimes with some difference. Adoption, fostering. What is the difference? Adapting a child versus fostering a child. What is the difference? Legal terms. One is permanent, the other is a temporary. Temporary, exactly. So they both talk about the uh, rearing children separately. They are they're being reared in a different environment. But adoption is more legal. So legally they are adopted, they get the legal rights. Children get the legal rights of the family. Responsibilities, affiliation to them. All the rights are obtained in adoption. This is more legal, more permanent. Fostering is for temporary sake. In a temporary situation, children are taken because you are not able to economically deal with them. Or you are going through a disease or a problem, not able to take care of the child. Child is taken to another family. In that case, it is called a fostering method, placing children temporarily in a place of care from their normal living situation. It's called a fostering. And most of the times in fostering, children are taken care below the age of 18 the legal age, below the age of legal age. So minor age. Once they become major, they tend to have their own life, their own hereditary components, responsibilities. So they send them back after some time in fostering. It's like this, let's say, a family a parent, one of the parent is sick, maybe sick for five years, 10 years. During that time, someone else will, will take care of that baby. No. So like that fostering is only for temporary, maybe a few years later. 18, they become adults, right? Basically, they become majors. They can have their own life. They don't necessarily have to stay, but there is no compulsion. Fostering just refers to a condition where it is temporary upbringing. Adoption refers to more permanent upbringing with the legal rights just to explain two different scenarios. But here, I don't think it matters too much to us for the time period we study here. But some books say adoption studies, some in the syllabus they gave fostering method. Okay, so what happens in adoption studies are this. So basically they, they wanted to have, I was telling you rearing children separate. So here they want to rear children in different environments. Maybe twins are non uh, monozygotic or dizygotic. Okay, so here, so this is another way of identifying or uh, understanding concept of nature and nurture. So what happens in this method, children are selected at random and are placed in different homes. Let's say you want to identify a specific role of environment. You can random, you can pick up children and put them in at least good average poor homes, at least three conditions, good homes, average homes, poor homes. You want to see how environment can influence their behavior, their intelligence. Like that, you categorize them into different homes, irrespective of what genes they have. Okay, you don't have to have monozygotic or dizygotic twins here. You may have children placed into good homes, average homes, poor homes. And selection has to be random. So when you take it randomly, genetic component should be taken care of because you are not placing 
a person with good genes or for better intelligence in good homes you are not biasing it you randomly pick okay this person goes to good home this person goes to average you do it in a random manner so that there is equal probability of randomly separating them so no bias should be added with respect to their genes okay so this should be as random enough as possible so that environment will have a bigger role than the genes after lapse of time they are tested on different intelligence scales let's say you want to identify intelligence so test them by doing certain tests certain maybe question years certain tests are there where iq levels can be measured how accurate they are is a different question but there are ways there are methods to test their iq levels in that case you see if the good homes and average homes are poor homes did they produce differences in intelligence is there any any impact of environment family environment on their intelligence this is what you would study assuming that the genetics are not influencing it if intelligence has environmental component children placed in good home should score better than those in average and poor ones so children who are who are who are brought brought in a good home should perform better than the people who are brought in the brought up in the average and poor families correct that is how we will come to know whether environment has any important role i'll show you an example on this so idea is simple here you want to grow them in different environments to see the impact of environment okay so one one study uh, this was from 2005 adoption studies have shown that children born out of schizophrenic parents parents who suffered from schizophrenia and adopted by non schizophrenic parents so parents had schizophrenia and uh, but they were sent to families where the parents didn't have this problem and they have higher chance of developing the disorder than the children out of normal biological parents and adopted by the same okay so what are we learning here people born to schizophrenic parents but brought up in an environment where schizophrenia is not there don't exist they have higher chance than those children okay are born to normal parents adopted by the normal parents so what are they trying to tell here what is the study aiming to tell genetic role or nurture role genetics genetics so genes are so the problem the character they got is from their parents doesn't matter what environment they are living so these schizophrenic parents will have children doesn't matter in what environment they are taken to they will have the impact of their parents because of the genes so genetic role higher genetic role for schizophrenia this is this doesn't conclude anything on this but they just say comparatively people with schizo people born to children born to schizophrenic parents have higher chance of getting schizophrenia okay meaning genetics definitely have an important role here excuse me okay are you done writing you are getting anything on this so i'll wait otherwise i want to show an image on this so let's take this example so what do you do in uh, adoption studies this is part of behavioral genetics so let's say we have 
biological parents so he is the child of these two people they are, they are the biological parents of this child but this child has reared up in an environment where different parents reared up with different parents so what do you do so you want to see to what extent our abilities our characteristics sexual orientations sociability psychological disorders determined by our genes shared by them shared with them and by families who do we live with so the child who is born like this okay more like her birth parents do you think the child will be more like his birth parents or more like his adoptive parents is what do you normally ask in this adoption studies birth parent or adopt adoptive parents let's see so this example we talk about we are trying to ask a question bmi index is it influenced by genetic factors in this particular case they are asking a question if bmi index body mass index is influenced by genetic factors so what they have done they are comparing the bms bmi eyes bmi of sorry bmi of adopted children with the adoptive parents and biological parents so they are seeing the correlation between the tendency of child can be obese in comparison with the biological parents or and adoptive parents who do they look like will that tell us little bit about the role of genes and environment let's see in the image you see here so here they are talking about on the y axis bmi of the parents mother is here father is here and in correlation with the bmi of the adopted children so children may be thin children may be obese and we are comparing with whom we are comparing with biological parents here and on the right hand side we are comparing with the adoptive parents so what do you see here you see a clear correlation with increase as you move from the right the left to the right thin to obese the bmi there is a higher correlation with the parents so correlation between biological parents and the and the child who sent for adoption is correlating with increase in the bmi okay you also notice there is a clear correlation with the biological parents so overweight biological parents tend to have overweight children because there is a clear positive correlation okay as the obesity is increasing so as the bmi also increasing for the parents as well as the child whereas if you see the same thing in adoptive parents same thing bmi on the y axis and thin and obesity on the x axis so what do you notice here there is no clear or consistent association with the thin to obese it more or looks less looks the same although you can draw an average line if you draw it will look like a, a, a horizontal line like this because there is no clear indication here you see clear indication of increase in correlation with increase in obesity but that you don't see with the adoptive parents so there is no consistent association between the weight of children and that of their adoptive parents so what does it tell we have to be careful with this studies as well is there correlation studies okay what is what is it telling what is the study telling us main role of genetics or main role of nurture genetics 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 because they have more correlation with biological parents with whom they share their dna yeah they share the environment but there is not much correlation here so conclusion from this study is genetic factors influence body mass index but we don't say that only genetic factors influence body mass index but we have to be careful definitely there is a bigger role of genetics here as we already talked about in case of obesity this is the same same component we are talking about here but study is different we are talking about biological versus adoptive parents as part of adoption studies or fostering studies sir so in yes. this if adoptive parent had the same graph similar graph on the left side then we would have concluded that you know both environment and the genes play equal role so both are important indeed actually both of them are important imagine the situation so they are obese let's say child born to be obese in a way or have tendency to be obese but these parents don't feed them well what happens If they don't feed them well, mm, right. they may not become obese. 
they may actually starve so definitely we we need both the components together genes plus environment unless you provide them the right food right environment to actually gain the weight it will not happen but underlining concept here is df on top of that environment can play a role but what we are learning is there is a bigger role of not everyone who fed like that will become obese there is an inherent feel for the inherent tendency to eat more or to have that activity less activity in life that controlled by genetic component to certain extent so genes is definitely playing a role so this problem may run in families but only possible when environmental component is added to that but as such environment doesn't show correlation meaning let's say these children have obese obese children these children went to this family but the parents who adopted them are not obese they didn't become obese but the children became obese so studies like that parents were all right but children who were adopted by them became obese so that's how they come to the conclusion that genetic factors play an important role but how much percentage difficult to tell and we cannot rule out the role of environment here as i was explaining to you but both together will come to this outcome or results in this outcome okay sir in this we haven't given the graph for the uh, child we are comparing the parents no 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 this is actually child is going on the x axis from left to right yes we have uh, the x axis is children it's a okay. correlation study meaning you have children's data together with it's like heritability component where you have both the values incorporated the dot represents is a point between parents and the child so we have data for both of them here okay so these are called correlation studies so how much there is a correlate correlation is increasing there is a positive correlation here neither positive nor negative it looks both the ways okay read that Uh, chapter I gave you it nicely explains both of them, twin studies, adoption studies, okay, with examples and even little bit of molecular data or information is given here, okay. Definitely read that. So did did you see any use or any importance of these studies? So what is the use of twin studies? how the environment or nurture can provide a benefit and possibly decrease the risk in getting an illness from a family so if you know that environment is playing a role or genetics playing a role do our approach towards dealing with the disease change so this is understanding the importance of twin studies we talked about what are the examples co twin faster method we talked about along with twin studies okay but we also uh, understood the uses and the problems limitations but what is the significance of this so if you found out that if uh, it someone is at risk for heart disease or diabetes so if you know environment has a bigger role to play then what do we do we take a healthy diet and we exercise because we understand that it is not only there in the genes but environment can also influence it. diabetes for example even if you are born to diabetic patients both of them are di have diabetes with a proper healthy lifestyle you can delay diabetes happening you can delay it you can postpone it basically okay with proper diet and proper exercise similarly if someone is at risk for other conditions like breast cancer or colon cancer what do you do if you know that you have something called a braca1 gene mutation in braca1 gene then you would regularly go for health screenings like mammograms colonoscopies you do so that you are you are you are seeing if such problems happen if they happen to come what do you do you take proper care at the at the right time so that the problem can be solved without it's being delayed without it becomes too complex so it's very important for us to understand the role of genes anyway for gene therapy and those molecular studies we talked about we would use the knowledge about genes to fix the problems similarly if you know the environmental role as well you can plan to deal with that disease in the same manner okay with proper care either through diet or changing exercise or uh, by visiting doctors for health screenings how negative how negative environmental influences can affect genetic expression is there an impact of environment on genes there seem to be the case as i was telling you in the epigenetic story exposure to community violence increases the chance of anxiety like for example children 
who are brought up in the families where parents are or one of the parent is abuse when uh, under has a alcoholism alcoholism and other abuse that it happens violence in the family alcoholic abuse which increases the violence again in the family these children tend to have more anxiety more depression even at later point of life so family environment is very very important that is why in many developed countries they insist on having a proper environment it is illegal in case if you treat your child you know in an unacceptable or inacceptable manner and also if you abuse the child it is not acceptable even in india but don't get normally implemented and sometimes you know when we actually uh, surprise if we hear the stories that happened in norway and other countries where you know parents were held for children's behavior okay but in developed countries it is it is the case because the family environment will define their future and especially if there is they, they undergo violence in the small cage anxiety depressions will develop in those children that is a single parent families families where uh, you have lot of uh, problems or issues the children tend to be uh, having more disturbances in their education in their behavior and also criminal tendency may also increase so children who are exposed to second hand smoke so father was smoking they may even develop cancer more often than those people who smoke so if father smokes father may not get cancer sometimes but child may gets it so their immediate environment is very very important it is a very very important role so this information is do you think this information is very useful these studies are they useful for us for handling or defining various environments family situations and taking proper care by the government to minimize these type of issues okay so this is the importance of twin studies and you talked about twin co twin adoption studies okay we'll stop the class here the next class in the next class we are going to go with the biochemical genetics and immunogenetics okay we are going to go with the biochemical genetics where again biochemical immunogenetics not much information is available in the literature so these are important i'm going to explain you with examples of what are biochemical methods how are they used in anthropology and immunological methods okay if you finish those i think in one more class dna technology recombinant dna technologies we can wind up this chapter so mostly in two more classes we can wind up 9.1 okay are you are you comfortable so far with the content here of what we are discussing in these classes okay please do read that chapter i gave you so i'll try to refrain as far as possible to give additional reading but when i'm giving it must be you know very important to you please uh, do read excuse me read about that right yeah. so um, tomorrow is a test right i'm going to send you the test for tomorrow so i'll post it tomorrow morning maybe around 9 o'clock so you choose to write and uh, i'm less worried about timing now you don't have to be exactly be on time like 90 minutes or so okay but that's all right but try to maintain that time as far as possible but i'm more interested in how you present in this test if you have to take 15 20 minutes more half an hour more that's all right with me if you are able to manage your time and present the information as expected okay then we'll have a discussion on the paper to see how well you are writing it good sir also if uh, if it is okay with everybody else can we even if it's possible for you can we explore a different uh, time of the day for the classes uh is that going to overlap with your classes what are your uh, other anthro classes social part 9 to 11 9 to 11 yeah then so what time do you prefer immediately after 11 i would prefer immediately after 11 this since the past one or two weeks i am feeling very sleepy sir that 3 that's to 5 this is very bad time indeed yes so i actually have some classes going on in the mornings but they should be done by tuesday so i can switch to another time from tuesday which is all right with me so what do you say sunil i think everyone is experiencing the same problem but i don't know the schedule though sir i will be busy after some days so uh, prelims is coming so i i don't have any option so this is what i have you are busy in the sense uh, only this time works for you you mean ha uh, yeah or it doesn't any time doesn't work for you what did you mean to say actually uh, i mean now i'll be joining some uh, prelims classes and prelims 
so i'll be mostly focusing on prelims so i won't be able to you know change my timing so this is what i am left with right now okay but so your classes will be in the morning so this class slot is not taken so you prefer this three o'clock that's what you're saying yeah you I prefer to push it a little later like five o'clock sir so i'm not sure right, right now but but soon it will start so i'm not sure about it yeah we can change it because i have more flexibility what do you think vishal is 5 o'clock better than 3 o'clock so you can probably have a quick nap or something like that so not yes sir 5 o'clock also is fine any time uh, this uh, apart from this is fine okay. i think 4 also should be fine acha but uh, yeah 3 yeah, yeah. we usually have lunch at 2 2:30 right and then uh, it kind of gets very drowsy this is what is happening with me as well i am my lunch time is also getting late because i'm taking care of few family things here so i'm actually having the food just before my class also bothering me but don't have much options left so and also here in andhra we have habit of having curd in the afternoon <laughs> so that that kind of makes it even more troublesome so i tried a couple of weeks not having food as in uh okay. not not skipping lunch uh, but okay. it is also not helping this is not at all good yeah because even not having food also make you sleep because you are tired right so uh, sunil what do we do we'll we'll take a try we'll probably do the class at 4 or 5 until your classes begin let's say when your classes are beginning we'll try to see because soon i think you are also going to have uh, sir's classes will be done right i'm hoping that so then uh, then we can choose so let's you figure out your class schedule sunil okay we'll see how it goes yes okay so we i'll push the next class to 4 5 okay we'll see maybe i'll move it to 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock i'll announce that okay so tomorrow night i'll let you know what time we are going to take the monday's class sure okay shweta i hope this is fine with you yes sir great right guys okay bye thank you for today okay let's uh, meet again on monday so tomorrow test will be there right Thank if you. i all have to give any instructions specific instructions i'll post them tonight in the uh, telegram so that right. bye